Well, Merry Christmas. I wanted to do a message on this Christmas morning that you could either watch with your family or watch if you're by yourself this Christmas that would encourage you and inspire you. And I will guarantee that you will never forget this message today because I have never taught on anything like this on Christmas Day. And so I'm going to use a little different story and then we're going to get into the Christmas story. Don't worry, I'll read some of the traditional Christmas story too today. But I want to talk today very simply on this Christmas about the personal touch of God. One of the things that makes Christian and Christianity so different than any other religion is that not only did God come to us and you don't earn your way to God, but the other thing that happens is as believers, we have a God who wants to touch us, who wants to have a personal relationship with us. It's totally different than any other religion. And I want to read a story and then talk about uh, uh, the Christmas story. But I want to tell you this nightmare I had the other night. It was a very strange nightmare. And, uh, and this is the part I remember. I don't remember the whole thing, but I remember this part. And it goes like this. So I dreamed that people pulled up to my house for Christmas. And I think it was my family, but I don't even remember that. And when I walked up to them, I walked up to the car and I looked at whoever was driving. I don't even remember who it was. I looked at whoever was driving and they looked right past me. And I waved my hands in front of them and they couldn't see me. And I walked right near them and I touched them and they couldn't feel me. And it was like I wasn't there, but I was there. And they were looking right past me. And I, it actually freaked me out because I realized they can't see me, they can't hear me, they can't touch me. And I woke up freaked out and I thought, that is the wildest, craziest dream because here there was nothing scary. There was no animals coming after me. There was nothing running at me. But the scary part was all of a sudden I was invisible. I couldn't be seen. I couldn't be heard. I couldn't be touched. Well, here's what's really wild, and I thought about this with the Christmas story. The Christmas story is all about the fact that God came to us and wanted a personal touch. And so I want to read this story, and then I want to just encourage you to do a couple of things on this Christmas day. It's from John chapter 9. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. The story's a little longer, but I'm just going to read the primary section here. John 9, starting in verse 5, says this. Jesus says this, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And of course, at Christmas time, we talk about Christmas lights and candles and the manger scene and everything that you see over here behind me. But the truth is, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And then he continues because he's going to help this blind man. After saying this, now this is a little odd. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Now, so Jesus takes his own spit, makes mud, and then he takes that mud and he puts it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, the word meaning scent. So the man went and washed and he came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begged, begging, asked, they saw him begging before because he was blind. They had seen him begging, asked, isn't this the same man that used to sit and beg? Some claimed, I love this, that he was, and others says, no, he just looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. And so here's the wild part of this story. Jesus could have healed the man without touching him. But over and over in scripture, you see, by the way, even spit, which is a little crazy, but, but here you've got Jesus going out of his way to touch this man to heal him. Over and over, Jesus heals people by touching them. And I believe at Christmas time, the personal touch of God is what each of us need. And I want to look at three groups of people in the Christmas story that were touched by God. See, if Jesus found it important to touch us for healing, don't we need to touch other people for healing? Here's what it says. So here's three groups who touched God at Christmas. Number one, his family or his mom and dad in this case, Luke 2 verse 6, you know this one. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. 
Here's my first challenge to you. I want to encourage you. Go out of your way this Christmas to give a personal touch to your family. Maybe you can't be with them personally today. Maybe you can't touch them on the shoulder. By the way, not everybody likes to be hugged. So maybe just a touch on the shoulder, even a fist bump is a touch. But but here's the deal. And if you have teenagers, fist bumps are more, <laughs> they like that better. But the truth is, Go out of your way this Christmas to personal, give a personal touch to your family. Now, maybe you don't have any extended family. Maybe you're an only child. Maybe you have no siblings left. I want to encourage you then. Go out of your way to reach out to someone in your church family. To go out of your way to, to say, I'm going to give a personal touch. Like Jesus touched his family, I'm going to give a personal touch to them. Here's the second group of people. The shepherds. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. I love this. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Luke 2, 16-20. Now, here's what happens in this part of the story. God gives a personal touch to who? To people who were outcasts. Because even if like some people suppose that these were the priests who raised the sheep uh, that were used for Passover, even if they were them, these shepherds, shepherds were never welcomed in the temple. Shepherds were considered unclean. They'd have to go through a time of cleansing. <laughs> Whether they were Passover shepherds or not, they would have to go through a time of cleansing and they were rejected. No one could, a, a, a priest could not even go and talk to them. They were the outcasts. So I want to encourage you this time of year to look for those who others might ignore and go out of your way to give them a personal touch. Maybe that's a phone call. Maybe that's a fist bump. Maybe that's a pat on the shoulder. Uh, uh, however, you can give them a personal touch. If Jesus went out of his way to give a personal touch to those who are pushed away, maybe we should too. Finally, the third group. This actually took place later, but it's still part of our Christmas story, and that is the wise men. Even if it was a few years later, the truth is we think of and we know that the Bible considers this part of the Christ story. When they saw the star, Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, they were overjoyed, verse 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, or myrrh. You realize that God could have had all these gifts brought to him by angels. You realize that each of the visitors, including the shepherds who told everyone, God could have had the angels tell everyone. You realize that even Mary and Joseph, the family who were part of this story, God could have done a totally different way to have Jesus on earth. But what happened? He wanted Jesus and God wanted to personally touch us to be part of our lives. So what is this third group? Well, that first group, remember, is your family. So you want to go out of your way for your family or even your church family. The second group is those who might be ignored. And this third group are those who have totally different cultures. Now, a culture doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who's from a different place. It could just be that they think a different way than you do. They believe differently than you do. Go out of your way this Christmas season, what's left of it here. Go out of your way to give a personal touch to people. Listen, God's whole plan was a personal touch of God. God wanted to touch us. The reason that Jesus touched people when he healed them is there's something healing about touching others. I want to encourage you this Christmas. Go out of your way to give a personal touch, a personal encouragement, a personal message, a, a contact with somebody. Yes, you can do it by phone, but if you can, if you can go out of your way to be in someone's presence today, to show them you care. If you're by yourself today, even if you go to Denny's and sit down and be an encouragement to that waitress or waiter who has to work today, you go out of your way to be a blessing. That's our Christmas message. I hope you'll understand the importance of that personal touch that God gave you and recognize that there's other people 
that when you go out of your way to give them that personal touch, that they sense God's personal touch to them. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, every week I offer that opportunity that you can know that you are a sinner, you're messed up, you're broken, and that you need forgiveness. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he sent who? His one and only son. That's what the true message of Christmas is about. He sent his one and only son. Why? That whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. The reason that Jesus came on the cross is because we could not pay for our sins. We could not get to God, so he came to us. We could not earn our way to God, so he paid for our sins. When you and I say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on a cross and rose again to pay for my sins because I could never make it to you. Lord, would you forgive me and I choose to follow you. When you pray that prayer or have that encouragement in your heart, that movement towards God, you surrender your life to him. The Bible says that you exchange your sin for his righteousness. If you did that today, then I want to encourage you to give me a call, send me a note, send me an email, send me a text, and we can help you in those first steps to how to continue, first of all, to know that you're saved, but then also to take those next steps of faith in him this Christmas. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas season. I hope you go out of your way, like God did that personal touch for us, to go out of your way to personally touch someone else today. God bless you and keep you. We'll see you at New Year's. We will have both services next weekend and an unplugged service, and it'll be online too. Thanks for watching.